This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. This weekend, people around the country marked the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Haj Malik al Shabazz, known as Malcolm X, one of the most influential political figures of the 20th century. Here in New York, his former colleagues were joined by family members who remembered the father of six at a memorial ceremony in the former Audubon Ballroom, where he was gunned down on February 21, 1965. He was just 39 years old. Today, a blue light marks the spot where he was killed. This is Malcolm X's daughter, Ilyasa Shabazz. Our people cultivated this land that was once barren, enslaved, and we can now call it the United States of America. And it's important that we make sure that they are honored, that their lives were not in vain. Um, and I would like to bring us into a moment of silence. It is around the time that my father was brutally assassinated, martyred, right here in this blue light. And if you could join us. The Audubon Ballroom is now the Malcolm X and Betty Shabazz Memorial and Education Center. Saturday's memorial there also features several speakers and artists. Singer Sharice Shesalt Ashford shared this spoken word piece at 3.10 p.m., the exact time Malcolm X was shot. Please give a warm welcome to Shesalt. Here, in this place, in this blessed space, where 50 years ago your life was taken in haste, was taken with hate, but Brother Malcolm, they ain't no. You can't kill what God has purposed if you bury seeds, they'll grow, and that's power. 310, yes, that was your final hour, but your life is still speaking, your words are still teaching, and though black people still are bleeding, there are little signs of freedom. Self-determination is the reason that we keep on believing we're seeing. There's a worldwide revolution going on. Black folk are tired of being indicted before we're even born, being buked and scorned, Lord, for having skin of a darker hue. Gotta can't pay for our humanity as we're trotting through, but still. Who taught us to love ourselves? You. Who took our plight and then who flew across the blue water so the world would know that the struggle is the same no matter where you go from New York to the Congo, Mississippi to Belize, from Alabama to Mississippi, it's the same. Please believe, Brother Malcolm. You declared. This is not just an American problem, and it's up to all Africans to bear together to solve them. Brother Malcolm, we thank you for your sacrifice. Ain't too many out here who would give their lives for the truth. Despite bombings and the bastions, you still lived a life of courage and committed action, full of compassion, loving people, always staying in position, working overtime that we might see our condition. That was your mission. And there was no hate in your blood, just steadfast, unmovable, boundless love and self-reliance. No, we don't have to live in compliance with racism, oppression, sexism, all the violence against women. Brother Malcolm, you'd have something to say. Because you rode with many sisters back in the day. Speaking of women, at this time, I would like to pay homage to Dr. Betty, who worked night and day to preserve your legacy in a dignified way and is the very reason why we can assemble today. Right. A mighty sister who raised your six daughters into queens, all the while becoming a doctor and fulfilling her dreams. A mighty sister who raised your six daughters into queens, all the while becoming a doctor and fulfilling her dreams. Turning tragedy into triumph, this space was created. Dr. Ma Dr. Betty, we thank you, and we are elated. Brother Malcolm, it's been 50 years and we still speak your name. Brother Malcolm, the black prince that was slain, let all the people in the place, if you will never forget, say Ashe. Ashe. It's been 50 years and we still speak your name, Brother Malcolm, the black king that was slain. Let all the people in the place, if you will never forget, say Amin. Amin. That was Sharice Shesalt Ashford. Now I want to turn to the keynote speaker at Saturday's memorial for Malcolm X at the former Audubon Ballroom. This is Dr. Ron Daniels. You get a whole generation of people dealing with black power and, and, and coming to a new, new sense of self-awareness and so forth, all attributable to Malcolm. And of course, we've spoken to his emphasis on human rights, because human rights, he said, is above civil rights. I mean, you're, you're not necessarily denigrating civil rights. That's not the point. But if you're in a society where the government is oppressing you, he said, you don't, you don't, you can't go to that court. 
if that's who's criminalizing, you take the criminal to court. Last year, the civil rights activist Yuri Kochiyama died at the age of 93 in California. Well, in 2006, I visited her in California and interviewed her for Democracy Now! She talked about the day Malcolm X was assassinated. She was with him in Harlem's Audubon Ballroom, cradling his head as he lay dying on the stage. The date was February 21st. It was a Sunday. Well, prior to that date, I think that whole week there was a lot of rumors going on in Harlem that something might happen to Malcolm. But I think Malcolm showed all along, especially around that time, that there were rumors going on. He was aware, uh, because there were things even in the newspaper, that there was some, I think, um, I don't know if it was a misunderstanding or just disagreeing about some things that Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm were talking about. They were personal things. There was disagreement between Elijah and Malcolm. And I think there was even talk that was going on. And after the assassination, however, Many black people felt it could have been by people who had infiltrated or that the police department and FBI may have actually planted them in the nation of Islam. That was Yuri Kochiyama speaking in 2006.